Welcome to St. Anthony Academy. My name is Sir Jason, your TLE teacher. Today, join me as we develop your life skills in information communication technology. If you are watching this right now, don't forget to post yourself while watching on Facebook and use hashtag I love TLE. So class, be ready, get your pen, paper, and self-learning modules, and let's begin our TLE journey. Now class, let's have the opening prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day that you gave to us. Guide us and bless us as we study. In Jesus' name, in the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Computer Hardware Servicing for Grade 7 So we are now with Lesson 3, Perform Mensuration and Calculation So first is we have Memory Although memory is technically any form of electronic storage, it is used most often to identify fast, temporary forms of storage So, if your computer CPU had to constantly access the hard drive to retrieve every piece of data it needs it would operate very slowly so when the information is kept in memory the cpu can access it much more quickly so most forms of memory are intended to store data temporarily so this means to say class no mag save kag data sa computer kinahanglan is save nimo siya as temporary kay og daghan kayo ang data nga mo save sa computer magkahinay pud ang dagan sa maong computer kaya maglisod og process ang CPU ug daghan kayo ka og save nga data so the CPU accesses memory according to a distinct hierarchy so whether it comes from permanent storage or the hard drive or input or the keyboard most data go into random access memory first or the RAM the CPU then stores pieces of data it will need to access often in a cache and maintains certain special instructions in the register. Next class is we have read-only memory or the room. So chips are located in the motherboard. So ato na siya makita sa motherboard class. So room chips contains instructions that can be directed ac directly accessed by the CPU. Basic instructions for booting the computer and loading the operating systems are stored in room. So ani kam ani ni mo save sa room o mag o mag reboot ka sa computer or loading the operating system. ROM chips retain their contents even when the computer is powered down. So the contents cannot be erased or changed by normal means. So dili siya basta basta ma-erase ni mo. It needs a long process. So next is we have random access memory or the RAM. So RAM class is the temporary storage for data and programs that are being accessed by the CPU. So RAM is volatile memory which means that the contents are erased when the computer is powered off. So the more RAM in a computer, the more capacity the computer has to hold and process large programs and files, as well as enhance system performance. So the more kuno magkadako ang capacity sa imuhang RAM, the more po magkapaspas ang performance sa imuhang computer. Early computers had RAM installed in the motherboard as individual chips. The individual Memory chips called dual inline package or DIP chips were difficult to install and often became loose on the motherboard. So to solve this problem, designers soldered the memory chips on a special circuit board called a memory module. So here are some types of memory modules. So we have dual inline package or the DIP, single inline memory module or SIMM, dual inline memory module or DIMM, RAM Boost Inline Memory Module or RIMM and Small Outline Dual Inline Memory Module or SODEM. So SIMs have 30 pin and 72 pin configurations. DIMM is a circuit board that holds SD RAM, DDR is the RAM and DDR2 is the RAM. So the speed of memory has a direct impact on how much data a processor can process because Faster memory improves the performance of the processor. So as processor speed increases, memory speed must also increase. So for example, single channel memory is capable of transferring data at 64 bits. 
So dual channel memory increase speed by using a second channel of memory. So creating a data transfer rate of 128 bits Double data rate or DDR technology doubles the maximum bandwidth of SD RAM. DDR2 offers faster performance while using less energy. DDR3 operates at even higher speed than DDR2. However, none of these DDR technologies are backward or forward compatible. So even with a wide and fast bus, it still takes longer for data to, to get from the memory card to the CPU than it takes for the CPU to actually process the data. So cache are designed to elevate this bottleneck by making the data used most often by the CPU instantly available. Next class, we have registers. Registers are memory cells built right into the CPU that contain specific data needed by the CPU particularly the arithmetic and logic unit or the ALU. An integral part of the CPU itself, they are controlled directly by the compiler that sends information for the CPU to process. Next is we have storage drives. A storage drives read or write information on magnetic or optical storage media. The drive can be used to store data permanently or to retrieve information from a media disk. Storage drives can be installed inside the computer case such as a hard drive. For portability, some storage drives can connect to the computer using a USB port, a firewall port, or an SCSI port. These portable storage drives are sometimes referred to as removable drives and can be used on multiple computers. Now, these are the common types of storage drives. So we have floppy drive, hard drive, optical drive, and the flash drives. So this is an example of a floppy drive. So there are pictures shown in the right side. So those are floppy drives. A floppy drive or floppy disk drive is a storage device that uses removable 3.5 inch floppy disk. This magnetic floppy disk can store 720 kilobytes or 1.44 MB of data or megabytes. Another is we have floppy drive. The floppy drive can be used to boot the computer if it contains a bootable floppy disk. A 5.25-inch floppy drive is older technology and is seldom used. So, wala na kayo na siya gigamit kay kasagaran ng mga computer nga naanis karaan na kaayo. Another is we have hard drive. A hard drive or hard disk drive is a magnetic storage device that is installed inside the computer. So, the hard drive is used as permanent storage for data. So, in a Windows computer, the hard drive is usually configured as the C drive and contains the operating system and application. So now yung mga data class nga gusto niyo save permanently, so arin niyo save sa hard drive. So the hard drive is often configured as the first drive in the boot sequence. The storage capacity of a hard drive is measured in billions of bytes or gigabytes. Okay? So the speed of a hard drive is measured in revolutions per minute. So multiple hard drives can be added to increase storage capacity. So gusto mo ka ng daghan kayo mo gusto i-saved, so dapat taas ang inyong capacity sa hard drive. Traditional hard drives are magnetic. Magnetic hard drives have drive motors designed to spin magnetic platters and the drive heads. In contrast, the newer solid-state drives or SSDs do not have moving parts because there are no drive motors and moving parts. The SSD uses far less energy than the magnetic hard drive. Non-volatile flash memory chips manage all storage on an SSD which results in faster access to data higher reliability, and reduced power usage. SSDs have the same form factor as magnetic hard drives and use 
ETA or SATA interfaces. SSDs can be installed as a replacement for magnetic drive. Next is we have optical drive. An optical drive is a storage device that uses lasers to read data on the optical media. There are three types of optical drives. So we have compact disc or CD, digital versatile disc or DVD, and Blu-ray disc or BD. CD, DVD, and BD media can be pre-recorded or read-only. Recordable or write once or rewritable or read and write multiple times. Next is we have external flash drive. An external flash drive, also known as a thumb drive, is a removable storage device that connects to a USB port. An example, an external flash drive uses the same type of non-volatile memory chips as solid-state drives and does not require power to maintain the data. These drives can be accessed by the operating system in the same way that the other types of drives are accessed. So types of drive interfaces. So hard drives and optical drives are manufactured with different interfaces that are used to connect the drive to the computer. To install a storage drive in a computer, the connection interface on the drive must be the same as the control controller on the motherboard. Okay? Now, these are some of the common drive interfaces. So, we have IDE or Integrated Drive Electronics, also called Advanced Technology Attachment or ATA or ATA. is an early drive controller interface that connects computers and hard disk drives. An IDE interface uses a 40-pin connector. Next is we have SATA. Serial ATA refers to the serial version of the ATA drive controller interface. A SATA interface uses a 7-pin data connector. Next is we have SCSI or Small Computer System Interface. It's a drive controller interface that connects up to 15 drives. SCSI can connect both internal and external drives. An SCSI interface face uses a 50-pin or 68-pin or 80-pin connector. So, mas daghan o pin ang SCSI. So, that ends our topic for today. So, goodbye and God bless everyone.